let us analyze how a project manager uh, looks at what is the present state of execution of the project how does he do revenue analysis how much how does he do margin analysis how does he prepare a dashboard to get a complete picture about what is the present state of execution of a project that's the agenda of this particular training and let's zoom into this first table out here this is you know we will typically you know this is one standard recommendation other projects managers are required to do their own uh, way of implementation the way they wish to prefer this is one of the guidelines this is not the uh, only way to do it but just sort of a guidelines for new project managers to track things you can track because you would be working as a PM would be working on multiple projects you can track based on date what is the project ID that you are tracking and what is the analysis on that particular day so you can get to know by date itself that which is the latest snapshot and which are the older snapshots you can look at older snapshots to see a trending also if required for your reference mention the project ID and you uh, just this is date is uh, replication by in the title also you can mention in your notes internal notes also based on the SOW you would have known that this particular project would require what kind of resources definitely PM would be the one person but what other skills would be required to be involved in in this project that's what a PM will uh, start sourcing uh, people on and he might be doing some front-end role and he might be leveraging some back-end PM for doing some pulling out cost cost reports doing some analysis and other kind of things and in the back end so customer facing communication uh, articulation tracking might be done by the front end but the back end may be doing the uh, cost related data and or Oracle data related uh, details project charts uh, dashboard preparation all these things TNEs travel and expenses so the orange colors which you see these were these are actual number of hours that at the beginning of project <coughs> anybody would have scoped for so as the title says from the bid form that at the time when the project was bid and agreed between sales and uh, the client these were the projected number of effort that a PM or a skill one NC network consulting engineer or a skill to network consulting engineer or a solution architect would spend on typically this is a uh, actual no the budgeted based on the budgeted hours there is a budgeted cost also and uh, this is based on some projected uh, guidelines given by uh, recruitment teams of respective bands of uh, uh, skills so a PM may be belonging to certain skill band and that would be somewhat like uh, 1160 USD per day uh, might be the uh, uh, cost of that person or that skill set per day on an average bit. These are certain guidelines. So based on these guidelines, you get a budgeted cost, which is Q5 into R5, which is number of days were budgeted into number of cost per day. That is how it is done. And hours are number of days into eight, considering eight working hours per day. So all the orange columns say, give you a reflection of the state of what the project was when it started this is the total price at which this particular project has been sold to uh, this is the revenue which your company will be getting now this is what customer will pay you and this is going to be your total cost including 51k of uh, travel and expenses so revenue minus cost will give you margin so when you started, you're expecting to gain around 96,000 uh, USD is the margin. And this is the margin percentage. Then this much is the percentage which you expect to see L5 by K5, L5 by K5. So this is the expected margin you want to see. And at the end when uh, the project gets completion. Now this, this, this table shows an intermediate snapshot. So how do you get the present snapshot of the project where it is trending whether it's red green and how it is done to get the present snapshot you need actual numbers and how do you get actual numbers you would run an expenditure inquiry on oracle data based on this project id 
from Oracle, you can get an expenditure query and it will look something like this. These, these are your transaction IDs, this, you know, IDs when these uh, entries were made. So these are the tasks against which people have logged in a number of hours. These are the project IDs. Uh, this is the project ID. This is the task number. These are this is what category, whether it's labor, it's hours, travel time or expenses, whatever it is. These are the dates, name of the person who has uh, entered this, how much number of hours, which whether they are done. Unit of measurement is in case it's a travel and expenses, you may have currency as in number of USD cost of air travel tickets and other things. So if you look at uh, unit of measurement as currency, then it shows two people have traveled, project manager and uh, consulting engineer, and that must be their uh, travel cost. And the project functional burden cost is, uh, this is what One, one of these fields is the actual cost which is done so far and this is because the employee salary is automatically integrated at the back end on the Oracle side these costs are based on that number that how many how much is his salary band and how much is the cost it has based on the number of hours he's logged so far how much is the uh, cost to company based on that and this is the org from which the resource belongs to and other fields are not that relevant. So based on this expenditure query, we insert a pivot table. Basically what we want to know that how is the, uh, how, how has the expenses in the travel, how has the expenses in number of hours logged by each resource. So when we create a pivot table, it, it gives us data in, in this format. That this is the each resource what is the total number of hours which they have logged? In hours, these are the number of hours till date these people have logged. Based on these hours, this is the actual cost to the company which has occurred today, as of today. So we put this data into the actual uh, entries in the table. So actual hours to date, PM. Let's look at PM number. It's, it's, it's filled as 73 based on pivot B23. How do we get it? Pivot B23 is this one. So there are two PMs. One is Prime Project Manager, who is the actual uh, uh, project manager which is doing. So his hours are, take a look at this one. This is 70 plus a backend PM of three hours. So 70 plus three, 73 hours have been logged in the PM. What are the other skill set? They're clubbed into uh, multiple different segments skill 1, skill 2, skill 3. Skill 1 resource is uh, we see 312 so it's 312. Skill 2 is 250 it is 250. Solution architect has logged 15 hours it is 15 hours and based on their whatever is the numbers their actuals have been like copied into this uh, separate section from the pivot table. These entries are updated here 73 here skill 1 has logged 312 Skill 1 has logged 312. Skill 2 has logged 250. So skill 2 has logged 250. So far, so good. So similarly, you have updated. This is the actual hours. And a PM will also tell that based on the current burn down rate of the number of hours, whether the project is on schedule, do we expect more effort, do we expect less effort and he will do a forecasting of uh, cost as to whether we are doing right cost uh, updates. So in case, you know, as, as a practice, typically project managers at the beginning when they don't have clarity they just do a difference of these is the budgeted minus this and then they'll put as an estimate to complete as their uh, expected completion in the initial phases it may be a vague 
because we are just using the same budget hours. But as the project pro progresses, you get more clarity and these numbers become more and more accurate. So using so far what has been consumed and what is your estimate to complete, there is an estimate at completion. So we see that uh, budget tasks are same, same and estimate at completion are same. The solution architect has given an estimate that his number of hours would be lesser than what was initially expected to be. So he, he, he might be able to complete the task early on. So maybe and that will save company some dollars. So this is the estimate cost at completion. Now these are the estimate hours. So we multiply them with the regular uh, cost per day of that person so that will give you estimate cost at completion that what would be the person's estimate cost at completion given these projections so this turns out to be total total cost and travel so far has been 422.93 travel and expenses t and e this we can get it from pivot table you see uh, in the currency section total is 422.93 so that is has been kept captured here that total is the uh, travel cost here but it is expected there may be few future more travels than expected that around 20,000 might be total expenses so this is a projection that when the project would be complete this is what it will look like actual data has been pulled from OP just like these number of actual hours the actual cost has been from the uh, pulled out from the expenditure query based on this information you have budgeted what is the actual consumption and what do you expect at completion so now based on these forecasts, this is called cost, cost forecasting based on this forecast you see that 351 400 would be your expenses and this is your revenue 482 so your difference of two would be the, your actual margin you, initially it was 96k supposed to be but now you expect it might be 131 because you have saved a lot of dollars on tra travel no longer such travel is required this improves your initially it was budgeted 19 margin but you are expecting 27 percent margin which means you are managing this project in a pretty healthy way going forward if any of the projected estimate costs goes beyond your budgeted hours as a pm you should take note of actions are these due to unavoidable reasons are these due to scoping challenges are these due to something else and based on that uh, you if, if it is like unavoidable one of instances that's well and good otherwise you will take a, a note and pass your project learnings back to the sales team asking that uh, it was not expected that skill one engineers was initially given 408 hours but the task is actually investing like 600 hours so it was under scoping so that any subsequent sales are rightly scoped and your organization don't take an overburden so this these are a few of the uh, tasks which a person uh, as a PM does and you want this the first table of the fever table gives an R wise logging for each of the resource and it gives the second table gives a distribution of against what all tasks people are logging so most of your tasks after taking PM you would expect people to be logging in the delivery section that each of the people are doing project delivery or execution before you take over the task as a project manager usually it is the pre-sales section which will be investing some amount of cycles this budget usually goes to sales team not, not the project delivery team i hope this dashboard might have helped you in some way one interesting uh, quick insight you can get is by checking how much has been the our budget been consumed this is the 650 which is consumed off of 6 1984 so you take a different uh, division of two and you get 33 percent the project has been 36% of the cost has been consumed. Looks like 33% of the work has been done so far based on these expected uh, time lines. This is a rough guesstimate of, of the MHS. So one dashboard is this way. Uh, I may share more videos to provide insights into how can you 
structured algorithm or a different problem. Thank you.